So once we have seen the theory of threads, let's see the practical implementation of it. Now, as you know that in by default in your code, you have one thread, which is main thread, right? So we, we do have a main thread by default. So all this execution is done by main thread, right? So if you write any statement here, so if you write system.out.println and if you print good, so even this will be printed by your main thread. So everything you do in your code, all the execution is done by main thread. Okay, that's your one thread, right? And let's say if you have a class and then class is calculator, if you create the object of a calculator, if you try to call all the functions, all the methods, that methods will be called by that main thread. So by default, we just have one thread. Now, what we'll do in this code is I want to print hi five times and I want to print hello five times. And that's my typical example, which I take every time. So let's say we have this hi here. We have, we have hi class and we also have hello class. Okay, so we have two classes here. We have class hi and class hello. In this class hi, we have a method which is public void show. In this show, I will use a for loop because I want to print hi five times, okay? So I will say for loop int i equal to one, i less than equal to five, and i plus plus. And here I will print, I will print hi. And let me copy the same code in hello. And here we'll print five times hello. So we are printing five times hi and five times hello here. And to call those methods, we have to create object, right? That's the only way to call methods here. So we'll say new hi, we'll say hello, obj2 equal to new hello. So we got these two objects. So we have, we have show method here, we have show method here, and then we are creating the object. Let's call those methods. So we'll say obj1.show and we'll say obj2.show, okay? And so if I run this code, we'll be getting our output. We got five times high and we got five times hello, right? Uh, it, is, it is running because you're calling obj1.show when you call this. So your main thread will go to this show and it will execute the complete method. It will execute this for loops. It will execute this for loop and then you'll be executing this high statement five times. The same thing, once it is done, your obj2 will call show. That means it will call this method. It will print hi, hello five times. The output I want is I want to, if I run this code, it's so instant, we get, we're getting all the output, right? I want to see one, one thing executing. So I want to, I want to print hi, then I want to take some pause and then I, it will print hi. So there should be a pause of at least half a second. Okay. Now how to achieve that pause? Now, since by default, everything is everything is executed by thread we can actually make your thread wait for some time or you will you can suspend your thread so how do we suspend our thread is we can use thread.sleep so it's a method which we use to suspend our thread so we can say thread.sleep and we can specify some time here so when you say thread.sleep 500 it is it means 500 milliseconds which, which is approximately half a second because 1000 milliseconds is one second. Now, the problem is it is a, it, it may throw an exception. So this is a checked exception. So it is, we should handle the exception. Uh, so we can use try catch here. Let me write try catch in one line itself. Again, we can write try catch in multiple lines, but I will prefer here to write it in one line because I know there will not be any error because of this. Why to waste multiple lines? So we have this one line. Let me just copy this and let's do the same thing for hello. Now, if you run this code, what will happen is your thread will wait for half a second. So you can see it is it is printing, it is waiting for half a second, it is printing this one, waiting for half a second, printing this, waiting for half a second. So you can see it is it is waiting for some time. So that is half a second. Okay. If you increase this increase this time, it will wait for some more time there. Okay, so we are getting the output in uh, after some waiting some time, right? If I, if I make it one, if I make it thousand, it will, it will wait for one complete second, right? If I run this code now, so you can see it is printing high, then waiting for one second, printing high, waiting for one second, then it is printing. So it took, it took five seconds to print all highs. It took five, it took five seconds to print all hello, right? So when you know that your, know, this loop will take, this method will take five seconds. This method will be executed after five seconds, right? I mean, just imagine we are not doing we are not doing any sleep method here. It is internally we are doing some programming. We are doing some stuff which will take five seconds. 
So in that scenario, your other your other method has to wait for five seconds, right? And that doesn't look good because if your one one method is busy executing something and the other other methods are waiting for the first method, what exactly we should be doing is if one method is executing on one code of your processors, since we have multiple processors in our machine, one method is busy uh, on one code, this method can be executed parallelly, right? I mean, there's no dependency on these two methods, right? There's no dependency of, uh, on, of hello on hi. So we can execute them parallelly. Now, how to execute them parallelly? So when you, when you say we want to execute them parallelly, that means the output we're expecting is something like this. We should be getting hi, then we should be getting hello, then we should be getting hi, then we should be getting hello. So we want hi and hello alternate. So the way you can do that is by making these classes as threads. Now, how do you make a thread? So it is very easy. You just have to say your class will extend thread. So if you do this, your class will extend thread both in both the scenario. If you do this, what will happen is if I run this code, okay, it is not running parallelly. It's because just but just by saying extends thread, it will not make a thread, right? You have to do something. That something is whenever you create a thread, you have to start the thread. Because now this this high is not a normal class, it's a thread now, right? Because every time you extend with thread, your class also becomes thread. So this object here also becomes a thread. So what we'll do is we'll say obj1 dot start can you see that we got a new method now start and it belongs to our class thread here can you see that and then we say obj2 dot start okay it should work now and if you run this code oh my god it is still not working in parallel the problem is when you say start internally so when, every time you say start internally thread executes a method that is run method so whenever you when you whenever you say start Internally in thread we, we always call a run method, which means instead of calling show we should be calling run because start always calls run. It, be, it seems a bit difficult initially, but don't worry, once we complete the whole example, you will get the gist of it. So when you say when you say when you call start, it will call run method here. And if you run this code now, can you see that we got hi hello, hi hello, hi hello in parallel? So the way we do that is we, we have to say obj1.start and then the start will call run. So instead of calling show, we need to call run. So whatever logic you're writing here, that should be a part of run method. Okay. So run is the internal method of thread. So whenever you create a thread, it is your responsibility to override this run method. But hold on, there's, there's, a, there's a small issue here. The issue is, you can see we got hi, hello, we got hi, hello. But unfortunately, we are getting hello first. Why not hi? Uh, it's because what is happening is when you say obj1.start, I mean, we are starting both the thread at the same time. There's a difference of one milliseconds maybe. So what is happening is when your, when your thread goes for the execution, so let's say your thread want to execute hi or print hi. Your CPU is only one, right? So CPU will say, okay, uh, you want to print hi, just print it. So it is printing hi. Then hello goes and say, I want to print hello. It says, okay, hello, you also print. Then hi goes and then hi says, I want to print. Hello says, I want to print. But somewhere between, but they both are reaching at the same time. Okay, so let's say we have two cores and they both are reaching to the scheduler. So we have in your OS, you have something called as scheduler. So both the threads reaches to the scheduler at the same time. And now both the thread says, hey, I want, to I want to get executed. Now your scheduler says, hey, hold on. Uh, I cannot execute both at the same time. So I have to choose between you. There are multiple criteria based on which your scheduler will pick up one, one thread. So criteria like the thread priority, uh, criteria like a thread which will take less time will be executed first. So there are different, different uh, properties based on which it, it will select. But in this scenario, both the threads Hi and hello, they, ha they don't have any priorities. I mean, they have a default priority. Uh, they, they have the same time of execution. So at this point of time, your scheduler will take will go for a random order. So it will choose any, any thread at random. And that's why somewhere in between it will print hello because it is going for some random stuff. 
Now, if you don't want to don't want to get that, what you can do is from start itself, we can have a delay of some second between these two threads so that they will not match it up. If you add a delay of 10 milliseconds, what will happen is Hi will execute and after 10 milliseconds, hello will execute. So there will not be any clash between these two. And if you can see this, we got the output as hi, hello, hi, hello, hi, hello. So that's how we can achieve a uh, working of threads. That's the example of thread. In the next video, we'll talk about how to do the same stuff with the help of our uh, interface because we have used a thread class here. Can I use an interface here? So that will see because what I mean, why we need an interface that is because uh, let's say I have I already have a class called as A and this class high want to extend a class A. And unfortunately, in Java, we cannot achieve multiple inheritance, right? We cannot, because you, you cannot say class high extends A and thread both. So for that, we need to use some interface. And how to do that, that we'll see in the next video.